Hello and welcome to our second tutorial. Uh, the tutorial is going to be about the SWAM instruments, specifically the SWAM string instruments, uh, control of the bow pressure using something like this. Now if you are a bit confused about what this is, um, make sure you check my other video, my previous video, uh, where I show you very briefly, you know, how the uh, breath controller works. The tutorial is not specifically about the breath controller, but I give a very brief introduction about it and how you can use it. Um, for this video, which has taken me a long time to upload, this is actually my third attempt, and that is because all kinds of shit goes on when I'm trying to make videos, you know, battery runs out, uh, the camera is playing up, and other things which are beyond my control. Um, but, alas, uh, here it is. And I'm going to show you uh, how the uh, violin, the swan violin, sounds when you control the bow pressure in real time as you play using uh, this breath controller, which is a tech breath controller, and specifically using this the motion sensor that allows you to control a parameter on the instrument by tilting your head. In this case, the uh, the way I choose to do it is by tilting my head forward. Or backwards. Now, when I tilt my head forward, the uh, bow pressure will go all the way down to the point that, at its minimum, you will have what is called the flower tandem, which is a very ethereal kind of sound, very uh, very soft, and uh, to the point that it resembles a flute. Hence, the name flower tandem. And when you go all the way, when I go all the way up with my head. Um, it increases the bow pressure to the point that at the max level you get what is called, I don't know if that's what they call it, I guess so a scratching sound because basically in a, with a violin or another string instrument you'd be pressing the bow all the way down until literally it scratches this string. So without further ado, let's have a look. Now I have the... Um, the breath controller is set up in such a way that when I'm holding it, when I when I have it in my mouth and I'm I've got my head in a neutral position, the bow pressure is roughly in the middle of the. Uh, if you look at the interface for the violin, you will see that it's at about fifty percent. So it would give you a neutral bow pressure. But as I go down, the bow pressure will go down as well. So this is what it will sound like without me moving my head. Okay, I might have moved my head a little bit ever so slightly, but still, that would be kind of a neutral bow pressure. And let's see what happens when I start going down. You see I was playing a little bit with the bow pressure now, I was going from neutral to pretty much extreme low pressure, pretty much flower tan low. And now I'm going to try and go all the way up. Now this is tricky as you might imagine because you kind of have to look up while you're playing which is not ideal. The other way you could do it is to assign the parameter for the bow pressure to the horizontal uh, motion sensor so that instead of having to do this like a mania you can do this. It's, it's still quite, it looks a bit dumb and, and it's not the most ideal thing but it might be a little easier than doing this. But that's entirely up to you. Um, and also remember that 
the instrument is separate from the controller that I'm using. So you could assign this parameter to a pedal or something else so that you can use in real time. But for me personally, this works quite well. Um, but anyway, let's get going. All the way up to scratching sound. And there you have it. Low pressure, all the way down, all the way up, all the way up in real time as you play. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to play a little improvisation with me changing the bow pressure in real time, just for you to get an idea of how it works. I might not use much scratching because you wouldn't normally use that much, but I'll I'll try and go for as broad a uh, difference in the bow pressure as possible. <laughs> 